Hey guys, welcome you all in T3P. In this quick video, I am going to share the information related to five mini projects related to Kubernetes and Terraform. So each skill will. Hey guys, welcome you all in T3P. In this quick video, I am going to share how you can have the information related to Kubernetes and Terraform five mini projects. How you can access it? So I am going to share with you. I share this information about these projects which will give you the summary from what you actually need and what are the tools you can use to prepare the, uh, for those projects. Okay, this is just a learning plan. It's a first step where we need to understand about the project then only we can implement it. So without wasting time, let's get started. So first we are going to talk about Kubernetes 5 mini projects. Okay. So just you need to keep in mind you need to start from the beginning means you need to start small then you can gradually increase your complexity so these mini projects will help in that way you can set up your kubernetes cluster either in cloud environment or on your local machines you can do that but also you need to be very much focused on your conceptual part conceptual learning is very important when you are working on real-time projects so a group, uh, I'll set the uh, links of these projects in the description box so you can go through them and understand what they are looking for and where exactly you can use Kubernetes. So the first project we are having is scalable web application. So here you need to create a highly available website that can handle varying traffic and the tools which can help you for this one Docker, Kubernetes services, horizontal port auto scalar services so these things you need to learn to prepare for this project right now i'm just sharing the information so you can prepare and try to build this project your own so it will give you a summarized form and uh, next project is about deploy a self-learning self-healing microservices here you need to ensure that whatever microservices you are, you are using or preparing is always available even in case of any point failure uh, so the thing is you need to use docker kubernetes deployments here and you need to understand liveness and readiness props in kubernetes for health monitoring these are the things you need to prepare for or learn from these types of project next project is database with persistent storage as you know persistent storage and persistent volume claims is used for storage management so, can do that one. So in this project, you need to deploy a database that retain data even if ports are residual. Next project, we are having CI/CD pipeline with Jenkins. Here, you need to automate the first and deployment cycle of a containerized application. So you can use tools like Docker, Jenkins, and source code repository. You need to learn about GitLab and GitHub so you can prepare these or learn these skills for to build this project next project we are having continuous logging or we can say monitoring with fluent so here the requirement is you need to collect and store your log data from all the containers in your kubernetes cluster okay so for this one you can use fluent elastic search and kivana so it will give you more understanding how you can monitor or log, uh, log your Kubernetes cluster. So just prepare for these projects, try to build them. In coming week, I will share the step-by-step -step solution for these projects so you can implement the hands-on. Now let's talk about Terraform project. In Terraform, we are having five projects again. These are the very mini projects where you will prove provision AWS resources with Terraform. So what do you need actually? You need an AWS account so you can use free tier account for that one. You need to install Terraform on your system. You can download the Terraform binaries or the files from the Terraform website. You need to configure your AWS credentials. Okay. So here the providers make sure to explicitly include in our project so for example right now we are talking about aws is our cloud provider for the resources so you need to configure those i said steps by step solution in coming weeks don't worry but uh, you just need to understand what exactly you need to do 
So let's talk about the first project what we are having. First project is static website deployment where we will deploy a simple static website on AWS. So in this one, you need to use S3 bucket. You need to configure this S3 bucket. And this, if you are using platform distribution, then you need to configure that as well. Otherwise, you can directly access your website through S3 bucket as well. Next project is secure VPC environments. Yes. Here you need to create a foundational secure VPC means virtual private cloud in AWS for your AWS deployments. Where why you need to do that one? Because you will, whatever resources you are going to provision, it will go in our private VPC. Okay, that's why you need to create and secure that one. You need, where you need to define VPC CIDR block that means what subnets you are going to use. Then you need to create public and private subnets across multiple availability zones for high availability. You need to implement internet gateway or net gateway for the connectivity. If you want to access your resources from the internet or you want to use just for upgrade, patching and all, then you can use this net gateway. You need to establish security groups to control your network traffic. Next project is basic EC2 web server. EC2 web server, you know, this is the uh, AWS IS service and EC2 is treated as a virtual machine. So you need to provision and configure a single EC2 instance to run your basic web application. Where you need to select an appropriate AMI that is the image that is going to help you to provision that particular virtual machine. Then you need to launch that EC2 instance with previously created VPC. So you need to create this EC2 inside the virtual private cloud that we created in our project 2. Then you need to provision any necessary security group for security purpose. It's treated as a firewall, we can say, in, indirectly, not directly, I'm saying. It's just uh, uh, defining the rules and all. But then you need to utilize your user data script to install web server software like Apache or Nginx or Node. Next project we are having auto scaling web application. You need to deploy a web application that automatically scales on demand. The last project we are having serverless API with Lambda. So these five projects you need to go through to start your learning how you can get hands on how you can learn real time projects um, implementation we can say so it will give you definitely a good learning opportunity just go through them try to explore about these projects how you can uh, implement it step by step if you want more such content then don't forget to connect with me on twitter telegram or youtube see you in the next video with me more learning content. Till then, bye.